Last year, my office began receiving calls from Vermonters who were leaving the state's transitional housing program at area motels. These callers wanted help receiving security deposits they were entitled to through the program and had been withheld. They felt like they had no option but to take what was offered, if anything, by the motel owner, and they had nowhere else to turn. I am so pleased to announce today that my office has reached a settlement agreement with certain motels uh, owned and operated by Anil Sakdev to return more than $300,000 to the former occupants of his motels, um, signifying security deposit monies that, were, uh, in, that they were entitled to through the transitional housing program. In addition, the state will, receive, will require verification of monies for needed repairs, maintenance, and improvements that will benefit current occupants. My office's consumer assistance program, and I'm going to stop here and, and, and introduce Chris Curtis, the director of the consumer assistance program. You may know him. Um, he's been at our office a long time. And um, so the office's consumer assistance program helped some Vermonters get their deposit monies back. Um, and that was uh, happening through our usual mediation service. However, in the course of receiving those calls, we were able to identify two key trends with regards to the motels involved in this settlement. Number one was that a number of people had been given a written notice saying that they may have caused some damage with varying degree of specificity about what the damage was. In addition, the notices required a signature and a waiver of pursuing any remainder of the deposit. In some cases, people felt compelled to take the money in order to have some amount as they left the program. These notices were unfair and deceptive under Vermont law. Under the settlement, all former occupants who receive these notices will receive their full security deposit amount back. In, it's $3,300. Um, and if they already received some of that money, it would be a remainder not to exceed $3,300. Other people, so this is category two, other people leaving the program received partial amounts of their deposits, and while notices were provided by rule to the Department of Children and Families, there was no photographic evidence or meaningful chronologies of all of the damages of all of the units before and after the current occupant. And that meant it was almost impossible to determine whether damage was caused by a current occupant, someone who came before, or some combination. And whether or not there may have been some damage, my office did receive complaints, and our concerns were that while there may be signs of damage, identifying the who, the what, and the when, especially after occupants had left the premises and after the passage of time, <clears throat> would be challenging. To the extent that poor or unsophisticated record keeping may also have an had an adverse effect on some people, that is also unfair. In the absence of complaints for all of these circumstances, but knowing that harms were likely, all qualified former occupants will be entitled to an additional $500, up to a limit of $3,300 total if they already received a payment at exit under the settlement agreement. In brief, this is about bad notice and poor record keeping. All the money is accounted for. We want to reassure Vermonters that all of the money that um, the taxpayers um, went to this program have been accounted for. Monies not paid out directly to former occupants have been or will be put to needed reasonable repairs, maintenance, and improvements with verification provided to the state by July of this year. These monies will make reasonable repairs to help improve living conditions for Vermonters who are using the program. In total, the Department of Children and Families issued $1.4 million in security deposits. This agreement accounts for that money with some additional to ensure a sufficient pool for payments and repairs and maintenance. The amount set aside for repairs and maintenance is subject to verification. If those monies are not put toward that purpose, it will result in a penalty paid to the state of Vermont. I will note that the motel's owner Mr. Sakdev has been cooperative throughout the process, and I believe he appreciates the gravity with which we viewed the situation. Motel owners throughout the state have no doubt benefited 
from state funding for this essential program, and they do provide Vermonters shelter who otherwise may not have shelter, and, and <clears throat> that is an important function, and we are grateful. Our fellow Vermonters, our, our friends, our neighbors, who require temporary shelter must also be treated fairly and reasonable by proprietors of these motels. I am pleased to have achieved a reasonable outcome that more than doubles the amounts already paid out to qualified former occupants, that ensures monies will be put toward repairs, and that accounts for taxpayer dollars devoted to this important program. I want to close by saying that shelter is a basic human right, and Vermont needs more and better affordable housing. We are so pleased to have been able to return these security deposits to the former occupants of these motels. Um, I threw a lot of numbers at you, so those are the, uh, you know, the, the, that's the overview, but I'm also happy to just tick through some of the key figures so to, to orient, reorient you. So the number of all former occupants, that includes folks who already got a security deposit um, and who were not eligible to get a security deposit because they didn't stay long enough, is that, yes. So if you didn't stay four months, you weren't eligible to get a security deposit. So that number was 429 um, who stayed in these motels. So we kind of teased out who all these people are. Did they stay the four months? Were they entitled? Did they get money already? The amount of restitution is $310,000. So that is the amount of money, um, the security deposits that are getting returned that would not have gotten returned if we hadn't gotten involved. And the amount already issued is approximately $300,000. Um, the amount recouped and retained for repairs, um, these are needed repairs, um, damage, you know, had been done, they were reasonable repairs. It's $372,000, roughly. And um, the amount to be documented for repairs and maintenance is $523,000. And the total deposits was $1.4 million, I mentioned that. Um, and the total accounted for in the settlement is a little more than that, $1.5 million. So we, we want to reassure that we went through to make sure the taxpayers, all these monies are accounted for. And the 310 is the restitution, but I just wanted to describe all of the other, um, all the other money so that the folks in the press would have that. And I'm happy to answer any questions. A couple things. Sure. Um, first, in terms of contacting former occupants who didn't get the security deposits back, um, what's the process look like for that? I mean, these were folks that were living in motels because they didn't have yep. a shelter. Like, how are you going to make sure that everyone gets their money back? Yep. So the process will be. Um, uh, well, a couple of things. One, DCF has records, so we'll be able to get names. But we've also, um, the, uh, the person we're settling with, the motel owner, has contracted with um, someone we know, a claims administrator, who will have a website, and the name of the website is in the folder I gave to Amelia. <laughs> so I can't tell it to you, but Chris probably remembers. What is it? vtmoteldeposit.com. And they're going to set that up. Um, it'll take a little bit of, of time to set that up. Um, and once it's open and the former occupants can submit a claim, it will be open for 60 days. After that, the money will go to the treasurer's office, you know, they're like unclaimed properties division. So it will go there and that's how they would have to, where they would have to go to get their, their, their security deposit back. And just to kind of clarify, um, in terms of the settlement, the, it's about $310,000 to be paid back to tenants who had been there for four months. Or more. Or more. Yeah. Anybody else who is less, that money's going back to the state since the state originally paid that money. Yeah, so, uh, th yeah, that's one way of putting it. It's like not a part of the settlement because they weren't they weren't eligible right. for this. But we wanted to just acknowledge that to get the full accounting of the full amount of money that went, so that you guys would have that big picture. So, Mr. Sack, I've got one and a half million, one point five million dollars total in security deposits from the state of Vermont. That was the total, one point four. Right, and those, yes, exactly. Well, some of them have been retained for re the, the reason, yeah, the reasonable repairs that were needed. Yep. And we all do lay all this out in the, um, in the press release, which is why I was supposed to have it here, but I actually gave it away. Um, it also lists all of the motels. They're really statewide. Um, you know, Rutland, Barrie, um, I think there was, uh, or Montpelier, so there, there's five or six of them, so, yeah. So, yeah, Mr. Sacco was one of the larger motel owners and people using this program, um, but obviously this practice or this sort of shoddy record keeping isn't unique to him. 
Are you looking at any other motel owners or motels in the state where this is occurring, and are you pursuing similar settlements with those motels? We don't, um, have, as a policy, we don't acknowledge whether we're uh, investigating anyone, um, but I will say this has definitely been our focus these past few months. Have you heard from any of these folks who reside within the motels about what, what $3,300 would represent to them, like how important that money is to them and what they would help them do? I don't know that we've had that kind of testimonial. Um, we did direct, and um, you're fine, Application, I think noted that folks should call the consumer assistance program if they had concerns or questions and so we and we, I think we we're getting calls before that but we we have you know people called cap and that's where our information came from initially and in reaching the settlement did you have to provide any proof of malice on the motel owners part or do you think it was malicious for the of these deposits or a so this was a consumer protection act claim you don't have to prove malice. Um, you don't even have to prove intent under the <laughs> Consumer Protection Act. This was a settlement, um, and we are grateful that um, the, um, the motel owner uh, settled now, and we didn't have to go to court. That's always favorable to everybody, so we're really glad that things turned out the way they did here. And you have secured the money, the actual money, like Mr. Sackett has paid the money that he's supposed to pay. Like, I just, how do you ensure that he's actually going to well, we, we filed um, what we, in, under the Consumer Protection Act, it's called an assurance of discontinuance, um, and it gets filed in court as, as, in the terms of a consent decree, right, Chris? <laughs> we, we call it an AOD, um, and it gets filed in the court as a consent decree, and that was filed uh, yesterday. It requires the money to be paid. The mechanics of how that will happen is the money is not held by the state. It will be transferred. Uh, to the claims administrator so that the administrator can make the payments directly to Vermonters um, and that will uh, be happening on or before February 23rd. Legislators right now are, you know, looking at the emergency shelter programs and whatnot. With this action having been taken, does the Attorney General's office have any recommendations for legislature to look forward to make sure that something like this doesn't happen? I mean, in terms of that kind of policy stuff, we would defer you to DCF for those questions, and we have been in, as you can imagine, like close communication with them throughout the process, but I would defer those questions to them. We're, we're just the lawyers for this one. I have a question. So did the individuals using the motel program pay their security deposits themselves? No, those were paid on their behalf by the Department of Children and Families. Got it. And so the security deposits would go back to those individuals? They yes, back to the they would go back to those individuals. They were paid on their behalf, so it's their money to you know to, to use if they if their um, unit was uh, not damaged or you know there was some other reason to for the motel owner to keep the the security deposit. And you said there was five hundred thousand dollars of damages done to the motel. Um. Yes, there were me the needed repairs. Yeah. And so that's all coming out of the settlement money. No. The, well, the settlement money we're focused on is the restitution that's going direct to the former occupants. This was an amount that, when we look at the total, that it was reasonable for the motel owner to keep. Okay. And so all of that's coming from money that goes to the motel program. Nobody who was living in there who did any damages will be paying for those damages. Because right. Because there's no documentation. Because the security deposit was made on their behalf by the Got state. It. I guess my other question kind of back. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. I just want to clarify. So money is retained by the motel owner operator for damages or repairs in their possession, having given notice to the department. What the state is requiring as part of this settlement is that we get proof that those repairs are in fact made. So that's a crucial second component, is not just that the monies were retained for, you know, itemized alleged damages, but that then there's some evidence to the state that the monies were actually put to that purpose. Awesome. So does that mean that there's going to be sort of more oversight as the motel program continues, sort of that we're making sure that the damages are being kept in check? Well, as a result of this settlement with this particular motel owner, yes, because we negotiated in our settlement for that. But other questions about the motel program, I'd have to refer you to the Department of Children and Families. Okay, so we're just looking at this specific motel. Well, he has five motels, this, this oh. owner of the five motels, yeah. Okay, great. Yep. And uh, I don't know if you know this, how many people over the span of the motel program stayed in these motels? 
Well, we know that there's 429. Who were subject to the transitional housing program? So there, recall that there is a second program. There's a general assistance program that can offer temporary shelter for individuals. So there's the emergency housing program, which is part of that general assistance program. So there are multiple ways that the state is attempting to ensure that nobody is out in the freezing cold without shelter. Um, this is that one group for whom it was specially designed to have security deposits on a very temporary basis to assist them in transitioning out of the program. So that's what the security deposits were for. Um, and one part of the settlement is an injunctive term that does require that if the owner operator of these five motels comes into possession of future security deposits under any program, they'll give adequate and accurate notice to the occupants themselves in all cases. Um, and if they don't, or if they fail to um, provide an adequate notice, um, they forfeit the right to withhold any portion of the deposit. They would just have to get paid out. And if it's deemed willful, it would be paid out double. So. And we'll have a, we'll link a copy of that AOD I mentioned. It will be in our press release, so you can peruse the terms yourself. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And so these guidelines were presented to the motel owner before the program started, that they would have to be documenting when there were damages, and he didn't do that. There, I would say there's great variability in the yep. records that were furnished to the department. Any other questions? If you think of something or if you look at the press release, of course, just let Lauren know. We're happy to either get you the answer or, or do our best to answer ourselves. All right. Thanks for coming. Thanks. Thank you.